Hey there, lovely soul. This is Infinity and welcome to your full moon lunar eclipse channeled guided astral meditation. Uh, this is definitely a big one. <laughs> this full moon with this eclipse. I have been feeling this for, oh, I would say at least a week and a half now. Uh, so May in general is pretty intense with the 555 Stargate, the new moon on the 11th. We had Mother's Day on the 9th. Uh, we're going into Mercury retrograde here in a couple days on the 29th. And then here on the 26th, we have the full moon lunar eclipse in Sagittarius. Our next total solar lunar eclipse is on uh, December 4th. And that is also in Sagittarius. So that is, uh, I started getting and feeling this eclipse energy, like I said, for at least a week to a week and a half now. And just <laughs> everything on the inside and the outside was coming in eclipse and eclipse energies. And then I was guided, let's look into the next uh, total uh, solar eclipse, which like I said, is on the 4th of December, also in Sagittarius. And so what the vision that I got as soon as I got that download and understanding was these two fires, these two big um, soul type fires that are uh, with these two big events with the lunar eclipse in May, also the, uh, the divine feminine coming in really strong. This at this time and throughout this whole month, um, and then going all the way to, to the Sagittarius solar eclipse. <laughs> Sorry, I'm talking so slowly. I'm getting like things flying in on my brain. Uh, it's hard to listen, see visions and talk at the same time. So I apologize for my, my slow down there. Uh, but anyway, that they're both in Sagittarius. They're both representing the, at least when it comes to our calendar year, which is very significant for us humans, especially in the society. We don't go by the astrological calendar. We run our lives by the, um, our monthly calendar. And that being December being the last month of the year, it's our last stargate of the year. We don't go by astrological, the astrological calendar for stargates. It goes by our regular calendar. And so that showed me a very interesting dynamic with the energy. And it's really meant to burn off what is holding us back in different ways and to really for in that last or the next i should say total solar eclipse being at the beginning of the last month of the year right before about a week before we um the 1212 stargate so it starts on 1212 ends on 1221 22 is our landing day as you can see there's lots of twos there uh, four is uh, two twos and there's just a lot of these like um, this like fire energy coming together with this Sagittarius uh, energy and for the lunar and for the solar eclipses and what the that Sagittarian energy is it's part beast right and part human and um it's a very, even though it's a fire sign, it's also a very earthy sign because Sagittarians, which I, that is my sun sign, is uh, that energy is very fiery, but also very connected and very earthy as well. Um, really pulling our energy from Mother Gaia and, and she speaks to us and um, straight to our heart to get us motivated to do stuff as a, as a power fire energy sign. That is kind of how that is. But 
what I was seeing here is the merging of that that human aspect and that animal aspect that that quick reflex instinctual knowing and understanding of self and being connected to nature and being driven by a deep instinctual need to move forward in whatever it is that you do as an animal so like for example cats dogs pigs elephants wolves eagles and everything in between uh and let's not forget our sea our sea creatures dolphins sharks whales all sorts of fish um crustaceans etc etc down to the coral the animal kingdom does not question self does not sit around pondering its existence and the meaning of life and what it is and what's out there and they just don't they are so what's so wonderful about animals is that they're so so secure in who and what they are they don't question their existence or or life in general it just it is what it is and they are who they are a dog doesn't ask who who am I what is my purpose in life they just go from a very deep instinctual um, urge to to be and create the energy that is meant to be exuded from them and so with the Sagittarian energy we have that very deep with any Sagittarius that you may know there is a real deep sense of of who they are on a very like animalistic level where it's so it's so rooted in the energy of who they are that it's it's that's not a question that fire from within is so it rages so hot and strong and that comes from that animal side of us and we are animals but because we're humans we're so much more complex and our need to um, what our souls are what we represent as being incarnate in a human body what all of it means and what it's all connected to uh, our soul story how we move from incarnation to incarnation what we're meant to do in each of these lives are our very important questions and that's why we're human to ask these questions to to live by our instincts and our connections to spirit and each and every day each and every month each and every minute of the day is moving us forward so we can grow and evolve and and to do that we need to be open and we need to be asking questions we need to be in a state of balance is very important energetically uh having our chakras open and connected and in flow and grounded with gaia and healed and not blocked from with energy from our past is extraordinarily important um but basically everybody has these temporary barriers that we need to as we awaken more and more and more fully see in our way a need to remove so we can move forward in a very uh diligent loving productive way so i posted a video earlier there were 11 uh crystal medicine oracle cards it was a really i love it when cards come out the way that they do i was setting up to do a video and all of a sudden just cards i needed to start flipping cards and the cards came out and and that's how i was guided to handle handle it instead of getting into some some other thing 
So I hope you've watched that video um, and seen those cards. And, and I've gone through uh, like what I was supposed to do, going through and really picking up the information, the, the wisdom that these cards are bringing through. And truly, it was about, there's like the theme of rebirth and healing and connection to soul, connection to the I am presence. Those were the really big ones. Um, that stood out and the need to, to go within, be, be in that soul space by yourself is extremely important. Um, oh, sorry for the <laughs> squeak. Uh, those, that's what's come through and, and with this, eclipse this lunar eclipse it is about getting into the heart space um so we can tap into the the soul space and connect deeper with our guides and guardians um and specifically with with mother gaia that was a, a really big one that came up is if you're if you've been around these parts, you know that that most of what I do is bringing forth connection and healing and guidance and messages and that Mother Gaia is the one that really drives that ship. And the that is a, a big part of this lunar eclipse. Um, she's let us know that that tapping into and working with deeply the divine feminine at this time has been really really important and I get in I got into that in my previous videos for this month with the um with the energy update and and the divine feminine um pick a card reads so if you have not yet watched those, please do. They're still extremely relevant. So it's not like that's, you know, past. We're still very, very much in this energy. And so before I got started here, picking or pulling or getting myself ready for this meditation, I was guided to pull a uh, an initiation card or what I like to call the theme card from the archetype oracle. And what I, well, actually didn't pull it. I, I put all the cards down, face down, and then I took out my pendulum and went over the, over each card until I got to the, I think it was the fifth card that it started to spin for me. And that is the Eros card. And that card is about love and passion and being open to love. And what really came through is, um, the the message that was attached to this card is about and it sits right next to the I am presence card currently um, here on my table uh, was to the question was consider or the instruction the advice consider your relationship with love on in all different ways and how you give it how you receive it how you process it how you witness it how it feels in your body how you uh, work with it or use it um, if you're stingy with it if you're if you uh, are grateful for it how open is your heart center how healthy is your heart chakra uh, how truly no bullshit do you feel unconditional love for yourself uh for others for the universe at large for mother gaia uh and how willing and open are you to change that and make it even better and stronger because that is our heart center chakra is the one of two chakras that are ever growing and expanding the other one is the third eye and so we can always have a bigger capacity for love of self for love of others for love and connection to our mother our great mother gaia uh, and all of the inhabitants upon her because that if she had her her wish 
she all of what she refers to as her babies which would be the humans would be united in in sh in their um not necessarily their beliefs but in their capacity to love one another regardless of customs rituals beliefs religions even history that involve these things because humanity is on a track to evolve and to see past those lower level um, issues and problems and so of the past and there's been horrible things all in so many directions and uh and so she's, from her, I'm hearing right now, let go. It's just time to let go more and more and more. The more that we seek to, um, it, it's, a, it's a fine balance because it's like we, we want retribution. We want justice. We want um, things to be right and people to pay for wrongs and, Unfortunately, a lot of that is connected to anger and fear energy and um, negative energy that's being held on by an individual or a group or the collective about any one thing only keeps it more relevant. And so that's why it's so important this this whole letting go business that we hear about so much and we get you know reminded of so much in spirituality because when we let go we we raise. We rise in our consciousness, we raise up in our in our frequency and we are able to process divine knowledge and wisdom through our crown chakra through our third eye and down through the other um main chakras within the body structure and we can we can literally change the biology of our physicality because we're releasing dense energy that pushes on our physical form on each and every cell it's gravity and the heavier denser energy we have in us the heavier and denser we are and you cannot it's just like a uh a, uh one of those the the big air balloons um the hot air balloons that's what they're called they they have to release weight so they can rise and that's really kind of the image that I get. I've been getting this image a lot lately when it comes to this type of energy and, and for people to understand how that works. It's letting go allows the body to raise um, in frequency, to rise up in, in your awareness and your consciousness and your connection spiritually so you can have a higher perspective. You can be closer, if you will, to the heavens, to the other planets. You know, the, the more that you leave ground, then the higher you, you get in. So material matrix, the the what we were taught versus what we know and knowing and I'll get to that in a minute is a very important aspect of this and and that is very lower level 3d textbook type material matrix information and we all got those types of in that type of information when we were young and we went or as we go through this whatever school system we're a part of the way they're still structured and that is meant in the way that it is structured is meant to push out the the ability the capacity the energy even for that digging going within and exploring the inner world taking in um knowledge and wisdom from the soul instead of from a textbook and that is always where your your higher level information and knowledge is going to come from because it's not filtered through anything um, even your own wants and desires it it pierces through any of that and it's just truth and so with with all of this it's just it, it means to 
have the intent to raise in frequency and and raise in consciousness raise and and be reborn go through a a change very um very specifically very intentionally because as we are becoming rebirthed we know that there are major changes changes taking place and we will if we go through a spiritual rebirthing awakening once we will do it again and again in these lifetimes because it's needed for us to evolve and so a big part of that is is our love capacity because truly only love is is the real thing that can ever heal us can ever connect us can ever um break through any divides of separation between us and our own souls and our own spiritual guidance and each other and mother earth and the universe at large uh it's really interesting to hear in different podcasts and stuff that i listen to there's still questions about things that are so obvious to me and to those of us who are spiritually awoken and connected uh like are there other life forms uh to us of course there are and we know that they communicate with us regularly and they're here and there's those of us uh lovely souls as part of the collective who are who identify as star seeds and really feel a great connection to another um type of place and race of beings and that you're here on another line of your soul journey and here to help this this world these people and we are part of whoever is a star seed um, you're part of of this great change here and you are human you know even if you identify as any other type of star seed uh, it's really important to first and foremost understand that you are human even though you have this greater um, awareness of, of other and and some people have a really strong feel of where exactly they have been before and very much connected to different uh, either star systems or planets and and races of, of other beings. Um, so that becomes a, a a soul truth, and it's not a question. Where where those who are still looking outside for the answers who want proof on the outside of themselves for those answers are there is this really real that there are other beings that they're you know sentient and all the all the things that they get talked about you know technology wise and all that stuff uh we who have been incarnated in those different places in those different lives and in life forms we know for a fact that that's true so that's something that's really important to consider and to remember too and and sometimes it's that's felt so strongly that it can it can make it difficult to be in in these lives here because we we feel these other aspects um very strongly but that's also part of the healing because one of the, the awesome things about gaia and another reason why uh star seeds come here is not just to help humanity and Gaia, you know, raise in consciousness and move forward, but this is such a the like the prime location for healing uh, the the soul and for coming into understanding and awareness because there's so much going on here that Gaia has to offer us to help us connect and heal and these human bodies are specifically designed for higher awareness and to live connected to nature in such a way um with with her with the elements with um the the animals that share this beautiful planet with us 
And so it's a give and take here when it comes to why we come either as earth angels, which is how I identify. And as earth angels, we've also incarnated in these other places too. So I identify, in fact, I identified first as a star seed. And then it's before I knew that angels could incarnate. So a lot of earth angels get confused and think that they're star seeds because that's kind of like the first thing you understand is like, oh, I've been other places. But as an angelic, you can go to many other places. So that there's like this kind of like melding of feeling energetically at first when you're still trying to figure out what you are on a soul base level, just FYI. So anyhow, uh, there is a very symbiotic give and take relationship between any incarnate as a star seed and an earth angel who's incarnated before, which all of us have. We've lived human lives and as, as a star seed or an earth angel, it doesn't matter what you are, a soul in an incarnate life, you're going to experience a whole host of different uh, things that, that, that you're meant to on a soul based level experience to form you, to, to guide your soul story. And with that comes pain on different levels, trauma on different levels, of course. And that's just part of, of any life. And, and in these lifetimes, we, are, we've, we have so many tools to help us connect to the Akashic Records so we can get more informed with ourselves and, and our soul missions our soul purpose all our soul soul stories and and here upon Gaia there's so much that we can we can work with to help us connect and clear and heal and raise and rise in our frequency and our station so so that was like the first big one, healing and love energy, love of self, uh, love of others, what's your relationship with love and all that good stuff, passion, romance, sexuality, how healthy are you sexually, how um, judgmental are you, do you carry shame when it comes to sex and romance and love, do you still see love as a painful part as a something painful and something to avoid are you open to love uh, how unconditionally loving are you to yourself to others do you use love um, as as a tool or a weapon you know all of these things to really think about your relationship with love how you nurture yourself and others how open is your heart center your heart chakra how healthy are you generally speaking do can you say I need to be healed on some level spiritually physically energetically and pinpoint what that is about um, is are there any kind of things that stand out for you uh, and and just kind of see things from from a perspective that it's not about judgment. It's about awareness of your soul in this body, in this lifetime. And what you're meant to do here, first and foremost, is get to get connected to that soul, to get healed, to be guided. We all have a different way, a different journey, but our lives, our energies are all intertwined and intersecting here. We're here together. So we have our own little universes that we're in, our own little pockets of space time, but they are constantly bumping and crossing and intersecting with others. And we can't deny that the energy of others and others in our lives and relationships are, you know, it's all blended together. So sometimes we have to um, satellite out and sometimes we have to like go deep, deep, deep in, 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 in. And as an energy healer, a shaman, a spiritual guide, an ascension coach, I'm all about um, <laughs> the unknown 
and finding and digging and exploring um, the the deep energies of people and unraveling these tight dark spots and knots to release energy so people can have the free space within themselves to to let go of energy very freely and bring in energy very freely and that also has to do with love love is such a big part of that when we love ourselves when we're when we take care of ourselves when we heal ourselves and that doesn't mean just on our own but like I'm a healer I'm a shaman I do my thing with people but if they didn't take themselves to me I couldn't help them so you're first and foremost your healer and to be uh, your own healer is to use tools to help you heal. And, and I'm one of those tools. And so is any other real deal type healer. So, so that's a, a really big thing is to have the fortitude, the, the, the tenacity to, to heal yourself to take responsibility for how you feel about love, your own body, the energy around you, the people around you. What do you resent? What do you judge? What do you, what do you shame in and out of yourself? Um, we all know about being grateful and that's a big part being grateful means feeling love and and sending love and receiving love that that's kind of the heart of being grateful is is a very loving energy it's that's all that there is with love is gratitude it's love there that that's what that's what you get there um so anyway i am really excited to move into this space and time with people um i i'm so excited for this full moon time to 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 have, be a this eclipse to <coughs> to happen or it has happened <coughs> i should say it happened in the middle of the night but these energies to process through to help people it's a resetting of energies one of the 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 big ones that we get in the year is is eclipse reset energies and the lunar reset is really about emotions the divine feminine healing aspects of this and um the solar is the other side the divine masculine and we so we have the the instinctual animalistic side the nurturing um divine feminine and then with the solar eclipse we have that the divine masculine protective um more logical if you will um types of energies so both of these coming together in this year with this with this eclipse cycle is really interesting and very exciting uh so I want to get into this one other aspect, the no, uh, the Gnosis card, uh, and that is about knowing. And so with knowledge comes Gnosis, and the Gnosis card is w the second card that I pulled in the archetype uh, themes and initiations. And... I'm just going to read directly from the book. So, Intermost Knowing, Mythic Truths. True knowledge is not found in facts and figures and scholarly, scholarly books on library shelves. Rather, Gnosis points to the deep and timeless archetypal wisdom that rises from the felt experience of having touched the unknown with every one of the senses. Those who are drawn to Gnosis find themselves in an esoteric studies likely involving mysticism alchemy healing or perhaps science knowing is their calling not knowing is their job description no matter how far the alchemists take their studies they come to the ultimate conclusion that facts slip towards mystery and soon the mystery results in facts this card signifies a knowing that is life-changing once you experience it, you are forever changed and become a guardian of Gnosis. 
The eternal mystery is calling you. Steady your passion in the deepest way available to you. So that is really like putting the bow on this, these cards that we got today and how to think about moving forward in this in the way of knowing and that deep knowing that knowing from within and remember how we talked about the the uh the sagittarian uh symbol is that animal and that and how they're instinctual and they know they just know uh what they are what they're how to be and so to lean into that and uh it going into this time period that we have that this lunar eclipse full moon is bringing in because this is about a real change in self in awareness in uh the way that you process and function and relate to others in many ways and and that can be a really uncomfortable place to be in it can be um lonely and scary but it's also very magical and very uh well obviously it's very spiritual but it's very eye-opening in the sense that you start to see so many layers within yourself and the world and the universe and others <clears throat> that life gets really really deep and very very rich and it just continues to be that way and the fire energy that's to fuel our passions our creativity our love of self and others is also deeply connected and rooted with the inner child and how we are to heal that aspect of ourselves go and really um, integrate with that and take responsibility for those energies within us because that's the closest that we have to our soul is our is our child selves and how we relate to that energy so and and we all have some type of situation or trauma to some degree some of us more than others when it comes to our childhood experiences but nevertheless they're there i don't know anybody with a completely perfect childhood um and and so there's definitely things there to go to 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 connect to to heal and i would encourage you to check out my meditation on um, healing the inner child and doing that uh, integration self-healing meditation uh, ASAP <laughs> would be good uh, it's a beautiful beautiful very it, it's one of my favorite that I've ever channeled and uh, it's so very healing and very connecting to yourself and to your inner child it's really really beautiful okay so moving on i am shuffling and have been on and off shuffling the hidden worlds oracle this is aside from the crystal um healing oracle crystal medicine oracle <laughs> That's what it's called. I always mess that up. And the archetypes and just picking out the initiations and the themes. So we have love, unconditional, like passion, love, romance, unconditional love, and then knowing, inner knowing with Gnosis. So I encourage you to look up Gnosis and different, you know, just go Google Gnosis so you can read different, um, different things about it. And it's just about knowing and wisdom and inner wisdom and connecting to all that um okay oh there's a oh gosh i watched this forever ago neil i want to say his name is neil i haven't thought about this in a while but there if you have the gaia network just do a search for gnosis here got our card oh wow it's the same card as the 
the one on the cover of the book. But anyway, go to um, Gaia and look up Gnosis. And that's spelled G-N-O-S-I-S. And I'm, I'm pretty sure this guy's name is Neil something. Neil, Cr no, Neil Kramer. Is that his name? Maybe that's it. That's what I'm seeing. Anyway, he has a, it's a, he has a short series on Gnosis I watched years ago. So check that out if you have not checked that out and you want to get more into what it is, what Gnosis is. Okay. So we got card number six here on uh, the 26th. <laughs> The Light Priestess, Galactic Wisdom, Cosmic Ritual. Oh my gosh, I love this so much. <laughs> so we got I Am Presence here in the center with Eros and Gnosis. And then it, the Light Priestess coming in, Galactic Wisdom, Cosmic Ritual. Right before we're to get into our meditation. So I'm really interested to see what they have to say here with this. Pages 46 and 47 of the Hidden Worlds Oracle, the Light Priestess. Here we go. Before you is a temple, a gateway to the realms of light, and it is broken. It is being restored, rebuilt with every moment that you give your own restoration and well-being. As you do this, likewise, this temple will be restored by the light priestess. She who waves the rays and brings back to us the codes of our origins. All you need to do is focus on the light within and without you. Spend time within the light, the sunlight pouring through your own energetic gateways, the moonlight healing, cleansing, reassembling every cell. The light priestess will ensure you receive the light that will reignite the cosmic fires within you and restore all that seems broken and in disrepair. She builds the temple of the spirit. And as you build yours, the temple she safeguards will be repieced until it is once again the gateway for the people of this earth to understand their place in the cosmos. Observe the subtle light all about you, the play of light on water, the reflection off windows, the prisms and lanterns and rays that imbue our world with wonder and messages from the depths of the universe. Allow the planets to connect with you. Re-engage with your starry self, your cosmic being, your eternal essence that is the light from a thousand stars. You are a temple and you are restoring the gates between the worlds with every offering you make to your own well-being, to your own spirit. Wow, I love this so much. It's so perfect. Oh, man. <laughs> and illumination, illumination mantra starborn one you your temple is not broken it is being rewoven from a, from the thousand lights of the faraway worlds you once were part of live this life but in this moment remember your origins and the divine path you will take home oh my goodness that is so funny that they're they're like reminding me what I was talking about earlier with like talking about star seeds and 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 all of that is really tied into this and I had no idea. Of course this card was going to come out but this is really part of that gnosis is what they're pointing me to as well. They're pointing directly to this card saying this is such a part of gnosis is is allowing yourself to be in the light, be the light, uh, work with the light and for the light. That's like a really big thing. I actually have, um, it says uh, on my website, um, with the light, by the light, for the light. The very top of my, my header because it is all about that. With the light, by the light, for the light. And you've covered all corners of the light and the light beings that we are in all levels and stages of, of Gnosis, of, of Eros, and 
and we can be rebirth we can have self-mastery we can go to the places that we need to um with like the under the with this card soul retrieval really talking about healing aspects of ourselves that are in still in energetic trauma regardless of time that has passed or if our physical body has been healed we do have soul type and energetic type bruises and and pains and and scars and 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 blocks in, in within our system that is there for a reason because it needs our attention and again being pointed back to to the that inner child it's like we we're we're so much better at ignoring our own thing when we have a child to take care of we will at least people that really care for that child will put the child's needs and wants and health before our own as parents or caregivers and that's exactly but we what we need to do with ourselves from the about the inner child aspect and that's why that meditation is so important because it really connects you back to the inner child it takes you back through time from however old you are now all the way back to as far back as you can possibly remember and when you're in that space you're able to go even further than you might think you can so i know i was i could very actively remember back to to around f four and then um just a little bit of pieces after before that and then i did that that i channeled that meditation i was able to go back to um before i was two so uh so i encourage you to do that again that's like, like i said it's coming up because it really is a a very good way to integrate this energy where you take care of yourself as an inner child in everything that you do not just here and there um, because it's it's really needed for self-care and self-love let's just put it that way um, without getting too too far into it right now I think I'll be guided to do a video about the inner child and get into the ins and outs of that a little bit more at a later time. <laughs> uh, but don't forget, please look into that meditation. If it's been a while since you did it, I put it out in February. It is May. Um, do it again and revisit that and do another integration. And hopefully you feel it even stronger this time. Um, there's this energy coming in. The self-healing aspect of, of being healed is first and foremost here. here. When I see this card healer, um, the shaman card that I very much relate to, the first thing I see there is that very first step for people, which is recognizing that you need to heal on a deep level and then starting to take the steps to do that, whatever that may be for you as an individual and really putting energy into that um and this whole rebirthing thing is such a big <laughs> such a big thing right now with these energies and these cards coming through uh and just remember the clearer you are energetically the clearer you're going to be on every other aspect of yourself because you are energy and you are water and energy conducts through water as we know it's so it, it just <laughs> we're we're energy and water and if your energy and vibration is low that water in your body is going to be of a low you know just imagine gunky water dirty water and then imagine really really clean water and the difference in what that feels like in the body and so this is why a hundred percent of the people who've ever been fat and obese and and meat eaters and and you know diabetic and just in really shit shape transform themselves and become vegans and and super healthy and every they're just like the energy inside of them is is has been completely transformed and that's why they look so different it's because the energy inside of them with what they did with and for themselves 
coming from a place of love because you don't make those types of transformations you don't lose a shit ton of weight and I've done it myself I've I've been over 200 pounds uh when I was in my early 20s or even before I was 20 I think I was like 18 19 when I was that fat um but you don't you don't change yourself to that degree until like a button gets pushed where you're like what the f am I doing now I'm going to start loving myself and treating myself just a little bit better and if I use food as a crutch for any of the different ways that we can use food for and I used them in all the ways (laughs) I used food in all the ways because it was the one thing that that I could control that felt good and even though as I ate and got fatter it it made me judge and shame myself horribly so it's not a good plan to use food (laughs) as medicine um, unless it's medicinal medicine type food because it won't it won't it'll comfort you for the moment but it'll it's a really really horrible cycle to be in and I, I do feel for people that are overweight uh, <coughs> fat obese however you want to put it because it it it's a really it's a really shitty riptide of of energy that you get stuck in until you like reach in and pull yourself out like nobody else can do it for you this is the same thing with any kind of addiction nobody can <coughs> like i can help people with addictions um because it's addictive it's energy that i can just reach in find and transmute for a person for a person but they have to understand how that works to begin with within themselves for me to even be able to get there to do that work with them. So again, you're your number one healer before me or anybody else can come around and help you through your any type of transformation or transmutation in healing any of your bodies. And we have five bodies. And so most people would say if you ask them how many bodies do you have, you'd be like, uh, one. <laughs> What are you talking about, crazy person? When we have five bodies. And so there is the physical, the energetic, the mental, uh, the etheric, and the spiritual bodies, and or the mental and emotional bodies and the, and the spiritual bodies. And all of these bodies are meant to work in unison, like, like uh, one on top of the other like nesting dolls kind of thing but with most people they're not like that because there's all this energy knots and knots and hooks and and blocks and dark spots and black holes and there's so many different types of things that the way that I see and visualize energy in a person's body and they all act a little different but those are the terms that I use for the different types of of, ener- of darker, um, shadowy, or negative, fear-based energies within the body. And so once we remove those energies, then the body can actually function the way it's meant to. And this is as people start to eliminate very negative things from their diet, especially meat and dairy products the higher in vibration they will be that you know then they'll lose weight and then they'll be more energetic they can i mean it's just kind of a chain reaction i'm not saying that everybody that that goes through that transformation you know stops eating meat unfortunately they don't but um the people who tend to also have not only the physical and energetic transformation but a spiritual transformation as well will be the ones that that went vegan um it's just those those two things are are very much connected and coincide okay so those are the messages that we have for this full moon eclipse i love i i'm just looking at this picture in front of me i've got all of these all of these cards and they just really really the energy that i'm getting from all of this is so intense so we are going to get into the channel channeled guided astral meditation self-healing meditation whatever level we're going to be doing this as always 
I don't design or or think these up. I just know that I am to do and facilitate a meditation and I show up and I open up and then I start getting the downloads, the visions, the all the different ways, hearing, channeling, uh, and the different ways that I do to facilitate any and all of my meditations. So I'm going to take a quick break here. Come right back. Um, feel free to pause uh, to turn off your lights or set your space. Uh, and we will be getting in right into the meditation. Light some candles. Um, get some incense. Uh, for yourself you can click in the background the video that I have in the description it's this 963 Hertz that I'm going to be playing throughout this um, it has been playing but it's going to be part of the meditation as well so you can have that in the back <coughs> in the background if you have two devices you can play from uh, and we will get started here in a moment okay here we are it is been a little bit since I put this on pause. I was just going to take a little break and unfortunately uh, there was a lot of noise going on right outside my door for at least an hour. So I was put on hold just waiting for that to be over and finally it's ended. It is 822 here in the Pacific on May the 26th, 2021, and we are going to be getting into our channeled, guided, astral, self-healing meditation. I know it's a mouthful, but it is what it is. I hope you had a beautiful day. Uh, I apologize for this coming out so late because by the time we're done here, and it gets converted and uploaded and all that, we'll be pretty late here on the 26th, but... This is how it's all turned out today. Uh, and again, this is a meditation that can be done at any time. And, and it coming out at this time, uh, you know, in the past, it used to bother me when things got delayed on my end um, and I couldn't produce when I thought I should be producing um, things for you. Uh, however, those days are long past. I don't get caught up in any of that anymore. It just is what it is, when it is, all in divine right timing. And so whenever you're brought to this meditation to partake of these energies, to uh, connect in the ways that we will be, is the time that it's meant to. <clears throat> And I wasn't meant to sit in this space before this moment right now. So without further ado, let's get into it and do me a favor and wherever and however you're sitting. And if you could be sitting, that would be best. If you have to lay down, um, that's fine. But uh, try to do this seated. And try to do this when you're not too tired or, you know, a lot of people tend to wait until late in the evening to meditate and, and then they always say that they fall asleep. <laughs> and so it's like, well, you're getting into a relaxed state and you've had a, your whole day of running on your energy. So yeah, you know, <laughs> it's going to happen. So try to do this in a time when you're not too tired to start off with. Um, for these full moon energies, I know a lot of the collective will be up most of the night. So whenever this drops this evening, um, I'm sure that some people will partake in doing it as it does drop because you'll be awake probably like I will, <laughs> will be until the wee hours. It just tends to kind of go that way on full moons. Um, but nevertheless, try to do this when you're not too tired so you don't slip into a subconscious state where you don't consciously remember what happens because it it is important for your conscious uh, awareness to be uh, on when you do this. So you're healing the mental, the physical, the energetic, uh, really connecting on all those levels. Okay, so let's start with taking some nice, even breaths in and out of the nose for a few seconds. Stabilizing the body.
And you want to make sure if you're seated, whether in a chair or your couch or on top of your bed, whatever, if you're cross-legged or um, kind of more kneeling or, or back on your heels, however you're sitting, that you're not too tilted in either direction with your back going forward or backwards, that your shoulders are down and away from your neck that they're loose and not tight and filled with you know tension like up towards your ears so loose shoulders that your hips are loose as well but your abdomen is contracted so your abs are engaged to support your lower back and you can just rest your hands gently in your lap And just make sure that you don't have any pressure points going on in the body. You're nice and comfortable and relaxed. So easy breathing in and out of the nose tells the body that you can relax. And just start really bringing that breath deep into the abdomen, to the belly. Think of putting this energy directly into your solar plexus. And with each uh, new breath that you bring in, you're just bringing in this very clearing energy down into the solar plexus and that it's permeating throughout the rest of your body going down into the solar into the root activating those energy centers feeling the energy going down your hips and your thighs your knees all the way down your calves your chins your ankles your feet your toes and open up these little channels of energy at the tips of your toes and just let energy flow out the tips of your toes and let's do the same thing for the bottom of your feet I like to envision like you're unzipping a zipper and just opening up those chakras at the bottom of your feet And just letting the energy flow out. And again, a nice, easy breath in to your body through your nose, feeling it go through your sinus passages, down your throat. As you do that and you breathe in through your nose, you're also activating that third eye, bringing the air into the sinus passages with really um, activates your third eye and your brain so really feel that as you're breathing in through your nose and feel it expanding the third eye awakening the third eye with each breath third eye opening up a little bit more a little bit more a little bit more And bringing the uh, air, the oxygen, the life force in through your nose, through your sinuses, activating uh, all throughout your cranium, your face, going into that third eye, bringing uh, air and clearing energies through your entire head, down into your throat, into your chest activating your heart chakra so let's just pay attention to the heart space the heart chakra really bringing that energy into the body feel that heart chakra throughout your whole chest and your upper back all the way around like if you had an inner tube going around your entire chest and that was that you would like hang like if you're going through a uh, a a river and you have your um, like hand, hands and arms hanging over the side of the inner tube and you could just feel that inner tube going all the way around your chest and your back and even in your underarms uh, so try to just pay attention to that entire area and expanding that and feeling it filling up with this beautiful green heart chakra energy going through your 
your shoulders, your arms, your elbows, down your forearms, your wrists, all the way through your hands, opening up the tips of your fingers and opening up the very center of your palms and just let that energy flow. And now paying attention to the throat chakra, that beautiful blue, I like to see that like a sky blue color, really pretty and, and uh, each time you breathe in, just feel it cooling and soothing your breath. And taking all that energy down into your chest, expanding the heart chakra even more, activating all of your chakras all the way down. So the uh, third eye, your the throat, the heart, the solar, the sacral, and the root. And let's pay special attention. Let's go down to that root. And let's light a match. Just imagine there's this bundle of um, like dried grass and twigs and uh, and that you can just spark it up and light a match and toss it on this little bundle that will light up with flame and just feel that energy lighting up there, the seat of your spine getting nice and warm and just allow it to uh, fill the space and with each breath coming down, pull that energy all the way past the solar plexus, past the sacral and down into the root, adding more air and oxygen for that fire to burn. Again, this is a full moon in Sagittarius. Sagittarius is a fire sign. It's, it's the last zodiac sign of our calendar year. And uh, that, that again is when we're going to have our next total solar eclipse. And so just tap in with the energies of the symbology of the Sagittarius um, symbol with that half uh, horse, half beast, half man, and those, those, those two parts um, blended together and how strong the foundation is of Sagittarius with those legs, um, how strong the, the, the thighs are for, for digging in and running and pulling and pushing and anything that it needs to do. And then the accuracy of the bow and the arrow um, at the top, that uh, very pointed energy with that fire energy, that the, uh, the ability to pull these two aspects together. Um, it's a very interesting dynamic as a Sagittarian, I can attest to that. Uh, and really, uh, this sign is able to tap in with that inner animalistic instinct on all levels. So, and no matter what your sun, moon, or rising sign is, you have this sign within your chart somewhere. So just tap into that energy, whether you know where it sits or not, um, whether it's in, you know, sun or Neptune or Pluto or Jupiter, doesn't matter. It's uh, of course, the constellation, the Sagittarius constellation is in your chart. You can tap into this as we can tap in with every other sign. And, and we group the signs by the elements. So in this meditation, we want to think fire and really bringing in that fire energy. And also coincidentally or not I'm being shown here that root shock with the fire energy and the Sagittarius that um, the animal that beast part of the Sagittarius that is, is the lower level um, part of that that combination right the human on top the beast the animal at the, at the lower side with the um, at the at the waist and below so 
no coincidence here that we have that root chakra there at the lower level too. So really tapping into that. And let's just imagine that the each breath you take and this fire energy that you're pulling down into and through your body and start to imagine it like this. Start to imagine each breath you take, just a little ball of fire, but it feels good. It's nice. It's warm. It's not harmful. It doesn't hurt you. It just invigorates you. It activates you. It gives you energy and power. So with each new breath that you take, in through the nose feel it going through your sinuses through your throat and your heart and push it down through the solar and as it goes through the body it's sparking greater connection and flow and transmutation of energies as you go down into the body into the solar into and through the sacral and down into the root and just letting this bundle of fire get bigger and bigger with each passing breath and feel it invigorate your body feel it light you up and send healing energy clearing energy fire is so amazing for clearing energies around you it's why it's so great to have candles lit in your environment it's so great to have um uh, incense burning from fire and just to really connect with fire energy to clear space with fire before you meditate or do any kind of uh, divination or working with cards or even watching um, anybody work with cards or connecting um, in that kind of way it's so good to clear your space light a few candles so you have a clearer space and you can really connect to that fire energy within you so really start to activate more and more of this within your body you might start feeling warmer as you really think about how your chakras are all uh, activating and connecting and you're pulling through this fire energy through the body down all the way to the root and each time you do there's energy going to that bottom half and really feel like your bottom half is turning into that half centaur uh, being being where we are that half uh, horse at the at the lower half and how strong that feels in your thighs in your butt in your hips and your knees just uh, I've always looked at those images and just thought oh that just looks so cool just to be so strong in that lower half um, and I don't think it's because I'm a Sagittarius I just think it's also it just looks really cool and um, so really tap in with that energy and just imagine yourself like um, you know, in the physical, stay seated, but imagine yourself uh, standing up and that you are in a in a meadow and you can stand up and you can start moving around and your legs they you don't have just um just two now you have four and um how different that feels in your balance and just imagine your body turning into that is what i'm seeing here which is kind of cool and just kind of get your balance about you moving around um in this space and uh, what I'm seeing it here is that we're going to get really used to really used to this pretty quickly here, just moving around, kind of galloping around, coming up on your hind legs and really feeling this energy kind of kicking back, like leaning on your front legs and kicking back with your back legs, really feeling that energy and letting yourself just really get into this and kind of um, dancing around galloping around uh, until you start to kind of get into a formation and and making that infinity symbol and so you're in this nice sized pretty good sized meadow and you can run up and back but in this figure eight infinity symbol and as you do this you're just really tapping into both sides of what we all are which is that human side and that animal 
animalistic, instinctual uh, side of us. And even though the with the centaur, the it's the lower half that is the animal. Those legs drive the instincts, drive the passion of that higher level human, and that's why it's so important to uh, to honor both sides uh, of these, um, or both halves, I should say, of this being, because um, they work in tandem. It's that strength and that passion of the the lower half that really drives that that top half to know where it's going and to get there um, with the 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 higher level intellect and the precision and the the fortitude to to keep going um, mentally so this all works together and that deep knowing and connection with soul and soul family and spirit and spirit guides ascended masters um gods and goddesses deities um whomever and and however they come through to you there's no right answer for that we all have different connections at different times that are meant to work with us and so uh whatever that is for you just start to open up to the uh, the energetic bond that you have with your guides and guardians, whether they're uh, animal spirits, spirit animals, uh, your friends and family, uh, angelics, your galactic brothers and sisters, like I said, ascended masters, um, whomever is coming through for you just um see they're like showing me we're just going to stand here in the meadow watching you gallop and run and go in this formation so they're on the outskirts but they're looking in they're creating this circle around you uh of light so it's becoming this beautiful circle of light around you with your guides and your guardians it's creating this beautiful dome it's so beautiful this beautiful dome of energy it's like this living pearl that you're in this is what i'm seeing and the pearl has always reminded me of the moon and a full moon so um as time is speeding by here as you're galloping in in this um pattern with your spirit guides on the perimeter creating this dome of energy it looks like a pearl that you're in it's so um it's very light and reflective and you can take your perspective outside of this dome um, and then take yourself back inside the dome and as time is going on it the day is is moving the sun is leaving the sky it's getting darker and the moon is appearing and up in the sky we have this big huge moon this big huge super moon um in the sky super super bright and with our intention and working with uh the universe we can do um magical things here and just kind of with our will reach out to the moon and hold on to that energy and pull it even closer to us just use our energy our power to reach out and hold on to the moon and that energy and pull it closer and closer and closer to us and see it get bigger and bigger and bigger than it could ever get in real life uh in the 3d but here we can pull it so so close to us and see it just taking up practically the entire sky and just let that energy permeate and reflect um over and in and through that pearl of energy that you're in and you can just stand there and witness this beautiful energy 
And then let the energy of your guides and guardians that are holding this space for you, this beautiful light space for you, feel their energy coming straight in and to you and feel the love and feel the connectedness, feel the guidance, feel the support and just breathe it in. And that intermingled with a little bit of fire with every breath you breathe and adding to your life force, creating healing and clearing energies within your physical being, uh, working to connect and get into greater alignment, your physical, energetic, uh, mental, emotional, and spiritual bodies and feel the energy from your guides and guardians like i said any and all of them that are connected with you are in this space now working with this light creating this dome this beautiful pearl of energy of moving uh electric and alive energy so if you look up and around this dome you can see just swirls of energy all around it's like you're in the center of the universe and there's just stars and light all around in this beautiful dome this pearl dome also connecting us to the healing energies of the ocean and how pearls are formed is where I'm being pointed now so take a piece of your awareness and put it there deep in the ocean and feel the pressure of the water the clearness of the water just the the very heaviness and the 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 element of water and what that is and how this pearl forms inside of a clam and that's a living being and it produces this beautiful energy that it takes from mother uh, Gaia that she produces this energy through one of the beings that she created that so she created the clam to create the pearl so we can take these literal pearls of wisdom divine knowledge this um stardust is what she's calling it that comes through her because she is she is a planet she is part of the the cosmos and and all of the planets and the stars and just what we are as well so we we reduce it down to her creating clams and how clams create pearls and what that is on a larger scale from the and just like this loop of energy and that we're in this pearl very specifically that's what she said at the top is that this is a pearl of energy that you're in that i'm um, saying pearls of wisdom comes from the everlasting sea the everlasting love and clearing and healing energies of the element of water and mostly what we are is what water and then energy itself so take all of this in, feel all of this energy and the love conducting through the energy of the pearl that comes from the sea, that comes from the clam, that comes from Gaia that she created to create just like we're created to create. And we want to um, really soak in the energy of the pearl and the energy of the moon shining over and through the pearl and into this beautiful dome of light energy and all of your guides and guardians, the angelics, the archangels, your own personal guardian angel right at your side the uh, ascended masters, any and all of them who you may feel a connection to, just let them come into your space. If they get your attention, if you feel who they are, see a symbol or a face or see or hear a word or get a vision of something, just let it come in. Just acknowledge their presence in however way you're connected with them right now. So I'm going to be quiet here for a couple of minutes so you can really connect to this space to this dome of with this pearl and the moon so so close activating you activating the pearl 
really bringing in um, higher and tighter and closer, stronger connections with your guides, with your own soul to help you on this journey. You may be asked to allow them to come in and get closer. So if you feel that just um, from your heart center, say yes. So you can allow them to come in and get closer. And so now hopefully you have more of an understanding of who's here with you as maybe they came into focus a little bit better. You got their visions or their names or they asked to come in closer to you. This is a uh, very symbolic of what is to come i'm hearing and how you're to connect on a stronger level a deeper level with your guides and your guardians and of course your own soul and really getting into the energy of your infinite nature your soul-based um energy that is in within you that is connected to something so much greater and bigger and stronger than than who we are on a on a human aspect uh and one thing to remember to recognize is that we are the avatar in this lifetime for our souls this is the body and the embodiment and the life and the journey that our soul uh, wanted us to go on to be in and to discover and evolve from so just remember that um, during periods of feeling kind of pressure overwhelmed confusion maybe uh, times of fear or um not feeling totally secure with what's happening because a lot will be changing will 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 be kind of um forced into energetic positions that are new and will force us to expand or to retreat and just remember that um, it's our perspective at any given moment and how we are experiencing our reality and and to master our frequency is to be aware and to pay attention of what's going on um, in and around us and who we are connected to that are embodied and in soul and spirit that we are connected to and uh, also to remember many times the truth is the unseen and the illusion is what is right in front of us in the 3d is what we can see and touch and um, many times, again, that is the illusion and what is unseen is real. And if you're in this space and you're experiencing this, um, this astral plane of existence where you can transform into to a centaur and feel that energy and bring in that fire life force into your body and see this beautiful dome that is a pearl around you and connect with the other divine beings that are connected 
to you and pull the moon close, 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 close and do all these things, that is what's real. That is the power that we can have and just a small touch of the power that we can have when we're taken to these places intentionally. Because if you didn't decide to come here to turn on this video or this podcast, this recording and listen to my voice and come into this space, connect with yourself, your soul, your energy, your guides and your guardians and with Gaia our great mother who supports us always in these lifetimes, then you wouldn't be here experiencing this. And just know with every passing moment, as you feel the fire going through your body, as your chakras are open in your hands and your fingertips and your toes and your and the bottom of your feet, um, that energy is passing through you and you're having this very like inhale, exhale uh, type of energy energy with Gaia with the elements and you're releasing and you're receiving another mantra that we say around here all the time I release and I receive I remember and I rise and so this is so our energy can flow and have this rhythm and we can blend the divine feminine and the divine masculine. So just take that in and feel the rhythm of the ocean. Feel the pull of the moon. Feel the energy coming through your guides and guardians. It's creating this beautiful dome, this pearl of energy. You, the center of this universe and feeling the energy coming up from the ground, from Gaia, pulses of love energy through the crystalline abundance matrix meant to help effervescently and effortlessly release energy superficially from your body so you can feel that pure love and abundant energy from mother Gaia so we can release dismantle timelines from that that were from the material matrix embedded in started in the material matrix and very very consciously now start seeing that moon um, go into eclipse mode and start to go into shadow but instead of it getting dark it gets red so see that taking over the moon and the sun and the moon and the earth coming into alignment here creating the shadow and turning the the moon this beautiful orange and red again more fire energy here it is like the moon is on fire and so breathe in and soak up that energy from the moon as it turns red remember it's huge in the sky taking up the entire sky and just feel that energy um just multiplied from the moon the normal energy we get from the moon but this soul this uh, uh lunar eclipse uh energy coming with the sun um, and the earth in alignment to create this color and this energy and how we can soak that in and really take that into our bodies and feel that and let it fire us up feel it from the ground feel feel Gaia soaking it up and feel it coming in from your four leg centaur on this beautiful full moon in Sagittarius coming in through your four feet and in through your legs your strong legs and just see and feel yourself like this feel it coming up from the ground and just soaking it in and this beautiful light stardust glittery glittery energy just falling down all around you from the pearl this beautiful glittery energy just falling down all around you, all around you as the energy is coming up from Gaia. Just feel that all the way coming up and all the way through your body. And just know that this is a, the energy coming through with this lunar eclipse is meant to reset us, to just give us that push to uh, take us into a timeline where we 
will be more open to delving deep within our soul and our spirit to go deep to retrieve fragments of our soul to heal trauma to connect with our uh, inner child as best as we possibly can at any given moment to act as the agent for our soul in this body takes a lot of work and dedication and to release energies that hold us back that keep us in fear that keep us connected to the material matrix so just see you releasing these energies down into the ground as energies are coming up feel the glittery energy from the pearl coming over you and just allowing energy to just uh, come right off of your body and just feel that feel that feel that and then this last thing I'm seeing here, which is so amazing, is um, to remember our light, our galactic um, origins, that we are here as... Um, many um, many of us incarnates as ambassadors from other star systems other planets other even places in time that are so different from this place here and we are here to work with Gaia work with humanity work with our souls work with he our human bodies to better understand them for ourselves and future generations that this is where we come to heal to experience love to experience grief to let ourselves go to experience the things that um, perpetuate our our fears and so we can see them more clearly and we're also here to advance the human race to advance the understanding of what it is to be connected to work with mother Gaia in these lifetimes is truly a blessing so just take a moment to feel all of that to feel the truth of all of that and to allow yourself to move further and deeper into your journey through healing of yourself for you to be your healer to take you on the path for greater healing for greater deeper spiritual understanding to connect with your soul and your soul family and Gaia to come into one into unity with others who are going to be a part of the greater matrix of the unity consciousness of the uh, unconditional love way of thinking and work from a place of a higher place of awareness of consciousness of um, psychic connection of telepathy letting go of the need to be separate to be uh, behind any walls or blockages so think of all of that you'll find you have a bow and arrow in your hands and what you are to do with this after you feel it take a look at it and see that it's not just a regular bow and arrow that it's actually all made of love energy and within the bow and the arrow it's encodements there so take go deep and take a look especially in the tip of the arrow in um in the qu in the quiver in the entire like all of it just see how there's just all these different encodements symbols and numbers and and uh, geometric shapes and this is all part of your soul code and your what is all that makes you you past present and future for your soul story and keys that un unlock more of the Akashic records for you to download information and that to be in this space is to be open to downloads and upgrades and activations that are coming through at this time and into the future to help propel you on your course on your journey and so take a look through and through everything here and just see for what it is and then you're asked to put the the arrow in the bow and pull it back and have it point it straight up um, to the moon 
And this is to symbolize as you pull it back and create that tension and to hold it there, hold it there, um, see your target as the moon. You could not miss it if you tried. It is taking up the entire sky, but it is your intention with your energy to connect yourself through your bow and arrow directly up into the moon, symbolizing that you want to pierce any walls, any blockages that stand in the way of true knowing for it yourself and then pull it back and have the intention of piercing any walls of true knowing for yourself any fears any judgments any any feelings of shame or ridicule for yourself or for others that keep you from moving forward we're going to pierce the those walls and blockages with this very very potent energetic arrow that is all of your soul encodement so pull it back charge it up with your intent and your energy with your time and your effort and even your finances your money charge this up this arrow up this quiver up as you have it in the bow and you pull it back and you want to put as much energy into this to blow out any walls and blockages that stand in the way of your true knowing of your soul evolution so pull it back and send all this energy as much as you can magic 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 is what i'm hearing send it through into the arrow and pull that that bow back and then release it and see it go and penetrate not only the dome that you're in, but all these glass walls that are beyond it and anything that is that is attached to you that is holding you back. See it just fall apart and fall away as it goes further and further and further and further like a rocket ship straight to the moon and see how fast and strong it is is creating this uh this tail of energy and sparks behind it and as as it penetrates these walls they come shattering and you see illusion shattering and it just makes what you see ahead of you that much clearer that much clearer as it's penetrating and and disintegrating and and um, dropping down these walls as this rocket of an arrow is going and going and going and in three two one we hit the moon and the moon sparks and lights up and like a beautiful firework display energy fire light comes um, raining down and the there's a super pulse and charge in the moon with this eclipse sending energy back down towards you pure and light and there's no uh, walls of illusion standing in the way it goes through the dome of the pearl dome lighting it up connecting back and reflecting from the moon and then finally penetrating back to you and feel that energy coming into the body lighting yourself up from your hands your face your feet your legs all the way through all the way through all the way through see yourself lighting up lighting up again i release and i receive and feel how that energy hits you and just soak that all in and just know more and more and more is going to come uh even though we're out uh we'll be out of this energy after a few days, it's still going to be permeating um, through your body. So just have the intention of allowing this lunar eclipse energy that, that your intention for releasing and, and tearing down these walls of illusionment and anything that's holding you back so you can move forward in your journey with healing, with the rebirthing process, to go within, to have self mastery to have soul retrieval sessions with yourself in whatever way you're meant to do so you can know more have more be more as you go forward in your soul journey so just feel that within the body and take note of anything else that is coming through for you at this time
And again, more deep breaths in and out through the nose. Bring in in that fire energy through your entire body. Releasing, releasing, transmuting energy. And then at this point here, the dome is going to open up and we are being told to just let ourselves run straight towards the moon. Just run, 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 run through the meadow, run around the trees, keep going in a straight like you are the arrow, run, run, run forward forward see the stars and the light and any um other animals that you may see along the way or or birds that are flying with you and um just anything that may come up but just let yourself run and gallop and prance with your body and really let yourself dance with these energies and kick your kick your back legs get up on your back legs really feel this energy and run 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 and as you run you see yourself getting closer and closer to the ocean in the distance um, as you um, as it comes into view and you're running and you're running and the ocean is close and we're a seeing a dock uh, with a uh, with a boat and it's a rather large boat so you're gonna just run all the way down to the ocean to the dock and then when you get to the dock you're gonna slow down and stop and just take a look here at this scene we have a boat it's a sailboat a rather large one and look at the boat and and you can see bodies and hear voices and see music playing and you can see shadows of people dancing um, on this big sailboat and just know that that is your soul family the people who you are meant to connect with in this incarnation and now more than ever after this beautiful uh, full moon lunar eclipse those energies those uh, ropes and tethers of energy of energy cords to our soul family are going to be pulled together um, even closer bringing us closer in, in energy and spirit and eventually in body however that's meant to be but you right now very intentionally let's um, take that body that four-legged centaur body and let's go back and bring it back to the human body just feel yourself transforming back into that human body with two legs, but feel the strength and the power of those four. Feel that lower and that upper half coming into one. And I'm being told here, just because there's two, it doesn't mean that you can't feel the power and the energy of the four and feel that animalistic instinct to run towards your future with abandon, without fear, with knowing where you're going, even though you don't. The instinct of that animal um, side of you will propel you forward exactly the, the way it's meant to. So now that you have your two legs imagine a beautiful outfit a beautiful suit a beautiful dress however you want to see yourself as you join this party this this full moon party on this beautiful big really big sail sailboat and so walk down the dock and have this happy um, blissful, joyful, grateful, blessed, excite, excited, inner child, um, 
uh, energy to go forward in your life, in your journey, on your soul mission uh, with uh, anticipation um, that's just filled with joy and excitement and no fear, no holding back, no wondering um, if things are going to work or not. Just know that they will exactly as they should as you walk down this dock and get to um, the the ramp so you can get on the boat and feel yourself crossing over the ramp leaving shore leaving the dock and going onto the boat you're in an unknown space with unknown people um, and everything is new and changing and evolving and you're happy to be there you're happy to be a part of this journey that you've been um put in place to uh to be a part of and you are letting go of anything that is there to hold you back that's that makes you um feel any fear or any trepidation you're just moving forward you're going on this boat and um look up into the sky look at that beautiful huge moon as you um, go into the cabin and start to see the people who you are meant to be connected to and just let yourself be in this space. You don't have to have all the answers. You don't need to know exactly where you're going or who the people are that you're always going to be connected to. Just know that you're always supported, loved, and guided and move in through your space, through the ocean waters with a sense of peace and joy and excitement for the future and knowing that you will do what you need to do to lighten yourself to heal to expand and to evolve and just let yourself be in this space walk through the party go out onto um, the top side and towards the front of the boat and really feel the air and the energy see the light from the moon reflecting from or on the water see the dolphins um, in the water hear their calls um, feel the air and feel the sea and just feel the connectedness of everything everything around you and just stay in this space for as long as you can just knowing that you're very intentionally moving forward into the future letting go and breaking down those glass walls of illusionment and having the intent to receive the downloads upgrades activations light codes symbols uh, divine knowledge and wisdom from your soul and all that is connected to to you and through you and um, have that open-hearted faith to move you forward and just know that all of the energy that's moving this boat forward is from your own soul and your own um, energy propelling you forward to be in this space with your soul family connected with Gaia the element of water the element of air and you the fire within and I want to thank you all of our uh, guides and guardians of course mother Gaia the the beautiful moon this time of the eclipse for bringing us here to this beautiful divine now moment to be in this beautiful space i feel so grateful to facilitate this um this meditation and these messages for you and again i hope that uh, you truly feel this all the way through your being and that you're happy and open to your future coming and with that said i will leave you here dear one but please stay in this space as long as possible just really feel into these energies and write down anything that may come to mind and just be easy on yourself in these next couple days you may feel extra tired extra heavy it's just these energies that are coming in that are flushing out and being brought in so it's like a really hard reset going on and we may have um, things coming up that that uh, are just a little uncomfortable 
but everything is truly the way it needs to be just so you know what needs to be processed to motivate you forward to have the intent of clearing and healing your energy and being lighter uh, in the future and with that said i will say goodbye here once again this is infinity i love you dearly i love you already uh infinite love and blessings into the future and always and forever bye for now